Okay. Uh, today's assignment is learning how to utilize uh, Audacity, which we will be using for our radio assignment. So get to your desktop, and if you haven't already, you need to download Audacity. So if you haven't downloaded it, just simply go to Firefox and type in Audacity, and it is a free program that is that is allowed. Uh, it's it's not uh, it's not that uh, big. So what's nice about that is you uh, you know if you if you download Audacity, it doesn't take up much space on your computer, and it's a freeware program. So you can go to the uh, SourceForge and download it. Uh, that's one of the locations and simply just click on this and it'll run you through the stages of Audacity on how to download it. And for our practical purposes we've already downloaded it. But there's also other locations too if you want to go to CNET that has another one that's a, a safe site um, and uh, <coughs> which is Computer World, that's what CNET is. Um, once you've done that, let's go ahead and minimize this window because we will need the internet later. Open up Audacity. Now, Audacity is a freeware program that allows you to manipulate, import, uh, and cut up any audio, create your own audio. Uh, it has many different features, and it is a fully functional program, which is a very, uh, let's just say, uh, a very effective program. When you're wanting to record, you simply are right here and uh, you just hit the record button and as you're recording it records your voice and you know it's recording because you can see how these lines are moving that's basically a uh, indication that it is functioning should the lines not do anything and look like this I'm sorry let me uh, delete that real quick because it overplays see how it's just going straight if it is doing this where there's nothing there, that means that for some reason the microphone is not functioning on your computer and we have to enable it. And if that occurs, just simply ask me and I will come and help you with that. Okay, so let's start with this. We're recording right now and uh, adding some audio. Now, when I hit stop, if I hit record again, it's going to create a new audio track and it's going to overlap this. So it's very important to click at the end of what you just did so that when you click record again it starts from there instead of all the way back here okay uh, if you mess up it's no big deal once you hit stop it's now where you can uh, kinda manipulate it just go back and if you go here this allows you to highlight what you want and you can cut it out and shorten it if you want this piece right here to be moved just simply cut it and click where you want it, say like right here, you want to insert it, and just hit paste, and it'll paste it over there. So that's how you can manip manipulate the, the sound of the line that's going on here. Um, if you look at the audio track, it has some different features. Um, you can increase the rate, which I don't suggest messing with that at all. Uh, in fact, a lot of this I wouldn't mess with at all, except for the fact that we have moving the track up and down. If you wish to move a track where it moves up over this, then you can do it that way. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's say, for instance, that I have a, um, a sound piece that I want to import in, like some music or something of that uh, effect. I would simply go to Import, and I can go find Audio. It's going to ask me what I want to import in and I just have to go to where I would have it saved which for me would probably be in my music and uh, as you can see I have different variations of, of music that are available currently for me and so let's say I wanted to uh, uh, insert a, a song it has to be in an mp3 format that shows it so if I grab one and I hit open what it's going to do is it's going to import it in and sit it right here so here's my song and it's overlapping this piece right here and when I hit play, you're going to hear you would hear that the background music is just as strong as this music here. And to be able to see it all in one thing, you can kind of shorten it up a little bit so that way you can see both windows when you're kind of editing. And um, this is the right speaker, left speaker, right here. And if you want it just to go in one speaker when it's playing, that's what it'll do. And that's just a sound effect technique, kind of like if you wanted a heartbeat or a scream or something of that nature. But uh, let's just say, for instance, we're going to keep it right dead in the middle uh, for the sound effect. 
but we don't want it to be too strong. So if we decrease the sound, which is the gain of it, then it's going to lower the volume of this while keeping this still strong. So that way you get a good mix of what we want to hear, which is you guys speaking, narrating, or acting. And then the, the sound effect in the background is not going to, to overpower it. Uh, so that way we're still focused on this, but we still hear whatever eerie music or action music or whatever thing you have set in here. It's the same concept, too, if you are going to import a special effect. You know, if you're going in here and you're importing and let's say, um, well, let's find a special effect first. If you go to the Internet and some of the websites I gave you, um, let's say Find Sounds is one of them, and I type in a, a heartbeat or just a heart, it's going to come up with some different ones. And all you have to do is, let's say we want this one here. I'm not even listening to it, but we save it. And remember where you're saving it. Always save everything to the same location. Create a folder file if you need to uh, so that you know where it's at. You know, um, you can create um, a folder <coughs> which I would probably hit new folder. And let's just call it uh, sound effects. Um, once you do that, save it in there because that's where you're going to be pulling it from. And then see, this is just has one name. Just call it Heartbeat or Heart. Now that we have that there, we can go back to our program and go back to the import file and go find that. Um, and where's our folder at? Sound effects. There's our heart. Open. And it's going to bring the heart in there. Now, there's the heartbeat right here. Notice it comes right here. We have to move it to where we might want it. So let's say that we have, uh, uh, we want a heartbeat right in here. Uh, specifically. What we want to do is change our control key. So this right here allows us to select things and delete it or move it and stuff or you know move it around. But this right here is going to move the slide. It's a time shift tool. Very useful. You know it because see how the arrows go outward? All you have to do is click and drag this wherever you want to sit it and then let it go. And it'll sit there. Um, my suggestion is once you get a sound effect where you want it and you don't want to move it anymore, shrink it down as low as it'll go so you don't mess with it again. Again, though, we want to make sure that the heartbeat is at the sound level we want. And maybe, for instance, we just want it to be a little bit louder to kind of come out and grab you. You might want to turn it up just a bit. Um, if you are busy editing this and you need it up here, this is where this feature comes in where you can move it up and it, and it moves it up over and puts this one, our soundtrack, down here. So that's one way to move your sound effects and one way to move them up and down if you need them. Okay, And notice that it doesn't shift. So let's say you're, you want to work on something that you can see at all times. So you import something in uh, and it's down low. You can move it all the way up if you need to. And, and so that way you can work on it and you're, you're totally fine with that. <coughs> Make sure that you go right back to this portion right here. Now again, where we're creating, if you are creating and you have these overlapping sounds, you can mute them and see how it changes color. That means that it's still there, but it's muted. So when we're just working on this one up here and we play it, we won't hear this in the background and it won't bother us. So as you import stuff in, let's say we want to start recording again. So we start recording a new line. And this new line's down here. It starts at the bottom. But we've got our other stuff muted out. All right, let's stop that. Now, let's say that we want this piece right here and make it one big audio across for our voice. All we have to do now that we've hit stop is simply copy it, cut it, and go to the spot that we want it to start at up here on this, and then paste it, which is very important. Now we've got it. Now, notice that there's still a gap space in there. If we don't want that gap space, and you might want that gap space, you might need just some blank noise, some white noise, some quiet for a special effect. But if you don't, again, you have to move that bad boy and make sure that you move it close. Now, because of the, the look right here, this is where the magnifying glass comes into play. If you hit the plus sign, it will take it way, way down to, I mean, just the very, very, like, point, point, point of the sound. So you can connect perfectly and then shrink it back down to see the whole track over here. And that's how you can shrink that. Um, 
essentially that's basically it. Your microphone is right here. You don't have to worry really about that. You'll know if it's working because it, the left and right speaker will be going up. Notice that we have our microphone turned all the way up. We could turn it down just a little bit so it's not too loud and the speakers as well, um, just for our own personal uh, you know, health. Special effects that come from this, if you go to the effect bar, these are special effects. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to have an echo of the heartbeat. Okay, I would highlight the heartbeat only, go up to the special effect, and click out echo. And it's going to ask me how many seconds I want to delay and, and you know how much I want. So you know I could hit 25 or something, or I might just hit um, you know two seconds, and then you can preview it and listen to it. And if that's not where you want it, then just change it till you get it to where you want, and then hit OK, and it'll modify it. Also, an important feature to note is that, especially when you're using music or something like that, some of your sound effects just quit. We don't want it to just quit. We want it to fade out. So you always highlight the portion that you want faded out. Okay, no one's ever heard a song and then it just stops on the radio. It has some sort of fade out. So we highlight the spot that we want to fade out and simply go to effect and click fade out and notice how it fades it out gradually. So it doesn't delete the sound, but it slowly diminishes it. And you can do the same thing for a fade in. So the music just doesn't start, it fades in equally. Okay. Again, there's so many different special effects, I can't even begin to go. If you change the speed, it makes them talk faster or slower, which obviously changes your pitch and your bass boost. So that means, ladies, if, if you're just a group of girls and you're doing a recording, you can actually sound like a guy by using these different things because it will make your voice deeper or darker. Guys, it can really make yours darker, or it could make it lighter and make you sound like a small child. You know, it's really up to you on how you want to edit it. But this is something that's very important because we're using a lot of sound and things of that nature. It is, uh, the program will freeze up. So it's very important to first, once you start this, you open this up, you want to save the project immediately. And when you click Save for Project, it's saying you are saving the file as an AUP. Okay, that's the Audacity symbol which is fine. We don't have to see that again. But it says to save an audio file for other programs, you would have to export it. But we're not doing that at the moment. So we're just hitting save. And notice how it's the AUP. Give it a name. And make sure that it goes to the folder that you want. And, and we can keep it in sound effects if we want. Um, now, once this is done, you can always go back after you do different things and just hit save project. And it'll just keep saving it. I suggest that you do this consistently. Every time you're making moves or anything like that, save it because if it freezes, you lose everything and nothing is more frustrating than that. Once we are done with this program, we're ready to make it an actual audio file. And once you are done with the actual audio file, you can look down and see what you got going here. It'll tell you how long this thing is, okay? And it is right now, you know, it shows the audio position. If I click here, it'll tell how much time is selected. Um, as you hit play, um, it will run through the seconds and stuff, and, and it'll kind of give you an idea of what you got rolling um, with all that kind of stuff. But what is really important is let's say that you want to now make this an audio file. With that, then we have to, we don't hit save. We're not saving the project, but we're going to export the project. We're going to create it. So once you export the project, it's going to ask you, do you want it as a wave? or do you want it as any of these other types of files? Usually I go for an MP3 because that's a universal uh, and it stays you know, not too large. A wave will be really huge and is not played by CD players sometimes um, or DVD players, but MP3 files usually are played on just about everything, especially car stereos. So you probably want to switch to an MP3 file and then type your file name. And again, notice that you don't want to save it there. You want to save it to whatever location you got going, okay? And then once you hit save, it will convert this. Now, this will stay the same because you have this program saved. So if you ever want to go back and manipulate it or change it, or let's say you listen to the final product after you've exported it and it doesn't work the way you want it to, you just go right back into this program, change what you need to do, and just export it again as many times as needed. Remember that when you mess up, if you get the first part of it right, let's say this part here, you're doing good, and then all of a sudden you guys start laughing or a noise occurs, just hit stop, go back to where it, when it occurred, and delete it. You know, you can hit delete button, or you can cut it, or you can simply go here and remove it. You know, it's up to you. Um, and everything that you do, you can also undo as well, okay? 
uh, these things will help you. Uh, so that way you don't have to keep redoing all the way from the start. You just pick up where you left off. And that's the cool thing about this feature. Really, there's no no reason uh, for, you know, getting panicky if something doesn't work out the first time because it's just over and over again repetitively. And that's basically your Audacity project with uh, your, your uh, the, uh, the technology side of thing of using this program, Audacity. Um, good luck with it, and hopefully... Uh, by using it and going to some of these websites that you can find your sound effects and things, it will be fun and uh, you shouldn't have too difficult a time.